What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for coming back to Cobra TV. I took a much-needed vacation off of YouTube to, you know, just have a little bit of R&R &R and get my head back in the right place. But we are back, and we're going to be coming back today with the Cyberpunk 2077 video of an article. Now, you guys already know this. It's, it's an article that came out right before I left for vacation and didn't have time to make a video. But uh, I want to just uh, talk about it and get it out in the open because uh, I love jump down in the comment section and uh, talking about Cyberpunk uh, with you guys. And we're also going to go over a post I did on the community tab about conversations about Cyberpunk topics that you guys would like to see here on Cobra TV. So let's go ahead and jump right into this i pulled some of the some of the things off of this interview that uh, i found uh, interesting some of it we've already heard it was just uh, described in a different way uh but uh let's go ahead and jump into it. it says for cyberpunk 2077 we needed another perspective for immersion of course uh but also because the city of night city is a world where every detail counts in addition cyberpunk 2077 will be a very narration centric game and since the game is an open world we can do a lot of things uh, we want the player to be able to focus on the smallest detail we would like to show him or her so in terms of entertainment, it's something very difficult and it's a big challenge, but a challenge that we're, we're happy to meet since we have options for the first person view. We wanted to get an instinctive grip with a natural feeling and total immersion. As you can see in the demo, the dialogue system is super connected. The goal being to give you the impression to move from one sequence to another in the most fluid way. You could go from gameplay to a cinematic without the slightest transition and without really knowing what will happen. For example, if you are during a conversation with a character, I start to release a gun, the latter will react accordingly, and this action will have an impact on the story that will be changed. I think what he's trying to say there is that even these cinematic sequences uh, could be different based on you know what you what you're doing in the game. So maybe, uh, for example, like maybe you decide to talk instead of shoot the cinematic sequence will be just you guys talking but maybe you decide to shoot and the cinematic sequence shows you standing over a dead body or something like that uh so i think the, even the cinematic sequences can be changed not confirmed but it sounds like that's what he's trying to say and so there's uh, the next question here that says, uh, I have the impression that you're not completely sure of your choice. For example, when driving a vehicle, the view automatically switches to third person view. Uh, then he responds by saying, yes, absolutely. We opted for this choice because we know that for driving, many people prefer that the camera is placed behind the vehicle. However, and this is really cool for me because I like first person, you will have the choice to return to the sub, uh, subject, subjective sorry, view to find yourself inside the cockpit, thus enjoy greater immersion. That is what I like. I want to be able. I want to be feel like I, I'm sitting inside the car, looking out. But you know me. I, I switch from third person to first person all the time. But uh, I think I'm I'm gonna enjoy sitting in, uh, being able to make it look like I'm sitting inside the vehicle. Uh, that said, he goes on to say, I want to point out that even if the adventure will be played primarily in FPS, know that there will be key moments in the game where you can see your character in full, including cinematics. You will be uh, able to contemplate it with all the customizations that you have attributed to it. Now, there is also, if I find the snippet, if I can take a snippet of it, they also confirmed that there's going to be a photo mode in Cyberpunk 2077. So that I believe that's also another way that you can see your character and all the things that you've done to your character, all the customizations and stuff like that. So the photo mode is confirmed by uh, CD Projekt Red themselves. So the next question is, during the gameplay demo, you had put forward the possibility of having choices that will have a real impact on the scenario on the unfolding of the story. The promises you made seem huge. How will this uh, really work? As you know, Cyberpunk will be an open world RPG and we insist on the RPG side because it's an element that has been enormously developed. In the game, you will be faced with many choices from the beginning of the adventure. Uh, from the moment that you have to create your avatar, you will not only have to choose your gender and the color of your skin, but also your liabilities. 
and it's a passive that will define your personality and the impact you will have in the world of Cyberpunk 2077. And throughout your adventure, you will have a, cho a choice to make, each having consequences uh, consequence to, uh, and an impact, because it's an RPG that we want to shape, and the more you will advance in the game, and the more choices to make, not to mention that you can interact with most NPCs. And we saw that during the gameplay demo. There's a lot of people that I, I imagine you could just walk up to and talk, uh, talk to. The next question here was uh, in the Cyberpunk 2020 board game. There are several systems available to assign skill points to his character, just like the uh, street cred system we saw in the demo. Did you leave the board game to make the video game, or did you simply incorporate board game elements into Cyberpunk 2077? Uh, he goes on to answer by saying the answer is already in your question. What you must have in mind is that Cyberpunk 2077 is a subjective RPG. This means that we use the Cyberpunk 2020 board game as a starting point, and in the latter, the city of Night City is a dark, very dark place where there is a great deal of social inequality with different classes among the inhabitants. And we saw that. We saw that with that that body that they pulled, they rescued out of that cold bathtub and it had like, uh, it, it looked like it was like a higher class uh, person who had a really amazing health care because when they came, uh, they came very quickly and not only did they come very quickly, but they were armed, ready to kill and protect the person that they were picking up. So it looks like there is definitely classes uh, in healthcare, probably even classes that we've mentioned in another video as uh, in, in law enforcement as well. Maybe you, you're high class, so you get like a small army to protect you, or you're low class and you get a mall cop uh, protecting you. We have taken a lot of board game themes, but also some characters. Knowing that the story of Cyberpunk 2077 is in another timeline, than that of the board game. To complete, to be completely honest with you, we were afraid to put too much of us in the game, that our personal touches take over the original board game. For example, during the creation of his character, you will have a lot of elements to choose, to customize. It's, it's about the look, it's the physical look, uh, the hand that you're going to hold your weapon in, uh, the classic stuff that you'll find in the RPGs, and the augmentations and backstory of his avatar. So we took elements of the board game, uh, extrapolating them from cyber, uh, uh, them for Cyberpunk 2077, and you can kind of see that in the character customization. Not only can you really f uh, like customize male, female, uh, you know, uh, gender, uh, uh, fluid and you can like like go as far as to make your entire history uh, for the character uh, like the backstory the back history and things like that that will affect you and the game as well then the next question says uh, can you describe the open world for cyberpunk 2077 what will be its size for example can we expect different settings such as a more natural space or is it a game where we can be confined to a large urban city? He goes on to answer, measuring the size of the open world of Cyberpunk is difficult to compare it to The Witcher 3, let's say that the world of the latter was very vast in its length. Uh, it was an open world made of very large natural landscapes going from point A to point B it took a lot of time because you were writing but also because it was a game that stretched horizontally. The world of Cyberpunk 2077 is above all a vertical world with buildings everywhere. And in this, it's difficult for us to establish a metric comparison. In the demo, you saw the main character waking up in his apartment, looking out of his window and seeing a living world to go out and take an elevator with no living screens. We saw that it was actually moving through. Sorry, I'm not reading anymore. I get carried away. We saw that, that you know, he comes out the elevator, walks to, or comes out the apartment and walks to the elevator and then actually takes the elevator down. There's no loading screens. The character is literally moving vertically down. So it is a Big Mac up and down. But he goes on to say, you can see that there are several floors in the building. The game will allow you to enter many buildings, knowing that everything was done by hand because we believe that quality comes first through manual creation. Nothing is procedural in our world. Uh, this is where the city of Night City will be vast to go thanks to uh, this verticality. So it's going to be a very dense map. I think that it's going to be decent sized. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as wide or as big as uh, Witcher, 
Witcher 3 was because he would say, yeah, it's about the size of Witcher 3, but it's going to be, there's a lot more because you can go up and you can go down and a lot of buildings to go into. So I think it's going to be definitely smaller than Witcher 3, but I think it's going to be more dense, therefore making the map seem a lot bigger than Witcher 3. I think it's definitely going to seem a lot bigger because there's going to be more places to go. So I I think what he's trying to say is if you take all of the, the square footage of the different floors and add it to the overall size of the map, I think it might add up to more uh, space than Witcher 3. Uh, but in, in a more denser uh, you know, area. Then he goes on to say, in the demo, you can see several types of weapons in different combat systems. All this is related to the class of the character that you will uh, create. According to the skills you will improve, there will indeed be advantages to using this or that weapon depending on the increase of skill chosen for your avatar. You will have the choice between technological weapons, powerful weapons, and intelligent weapons, and each of them will allow you to apprehend the game in several different different ways. For example, powerful weapons have a boost that allows weapons to ricochet against the walls and thus reach their enemies behind walls. Smart weapons take advantage of an auto lock that can target an enemy with homing bullets. Uh, as for the melee weapons, you could see the mantis blades in the demo. These are incredible weapons uh, which are attached to the body of the character and allow him to climb up the, on the walls but also kill enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, there is also another weapon that we did not show in the demo and which is interesting. It's the katana. That, my friends, is what I'm most interested in. I cannot wait to learn more about this katana and how it's and how it's probably somehow high tech. You know, I can't wait to see what this is. It goes on to say, we can see in the demo of armed vehicles. Uh, can we expect to take control of different gear in the adventure in addition to the classic car? Uh, he answers by saying, every time you see a vehicle in the game, it will be possible for you to take control and you can then start the fight from there. It's typically the things that I find cool to do but I cannot give too much detail about the different vehicles at the moment. However, I can tell you that you can customize your car in the game. Wow. I cannot wait to see what that looks like and how much customization you could do to your game. Uh, just the, 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 the game blows me away. The more and more and more I scratch the surface and start learning about this, uh, I know you're probably not learning anything new from these videos, but it has been super fun going back in time and learning all this stuff and just bringing it to the table here on Cobra TV so we could all have a conversation about it in the comment section and uh, just uh, give us something to do while we're waiting for this awesome game. Okay, real quick, what I want to do is take a look at the community tab where we posted about topics and discussion for Cyberpunk 2077 to give us an idea of some of the videos that we're going to be coming out with here pretty soon. Uh, so let's go down to the Cyberpunk uh, topic community post and we're going to take a look at some of these. Peter says, this is my most anticipated game since No Man's Sky. Uh, create fun content I will watch. Also, maybe dress up like a cyborg at some point <laughs> hey i've done things like that in the past so maybe that's coming maybe that's coming peter uh robert says i want to know more about the city of cyberpunk and the destructibility oh they did talk about that recently uh we can definitely make a video about that uh random events and just about everything else we can do in the game besides main story missions uh good topic there robert uh cuz says i want to learn more about the in-depth character skill trees uh, that's also another great topic because Moby says all I heard was No Man's Sky an update. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we do talk a lot about No Man's Sky here on this channel. And uh, yeah, and we're waiting for an update. It's something's coming here pretty soon. Uh, thank you so much, Moby. Uh, Anarchy Gaming, Anarchy Gaming says Cyberpunk 2077 has been on my anticipated list uh, for a long time, if they can produce the goods like they did with Witcher 3, then we are in for a treat, and I 100% agree with you. Uh, Michael Anthony says, I want to say romance options, lol, but really, I want to talk about the different street gangs I've heard in the tabletop version or in a lore book that Mike Pondsmith created. He described a certain street gang that was more like a cyber clown posse like gang. I bet we're going to see some outrageous, weird, different cyber-enhanced characters and gangs. And I 100% agree. I think we are in for a treat. 
Uh, we got Jamil McGregor saying maybe weapons, melee weapons, classes. Another great topic, uh, Jamil. We got Scott here saying 2077 is certainly highly anticipated by me, but nothing can beat the No Man's Sky anticipation, which still burns alive to this very day in hopes it reaches its full potential with huge next sized updates, changing and adding things. Game changer, uh, game changer things. Much respect for what you do, Cobra. Thank you so much, uh, Scott. Scott, Scott, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I there was something there. I I I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, Anita, sorry, Scott. Uh, Anita says, I think another interesting topic could be game choices. We are going to get to decide if we play male or female and the background of our character, but our choices during the game are going to affect and change the rest of the game. So Cyberpunk 2077 is not like, for example, Red Dead Redemption 2, where every player is going to finish with the same end. It's a game we are going to get to play many times from different points of view and have a completely different story and experience. What a great comment, Anita. Thank you so much. And I 100% agree. We got Night City Punk saying, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the character creation options and if there will be any special additions of the game when it drops. A good comment, Night City Punk. Uh, Michael Anthony again saying, oh yeah. Also, there's a rumored moon mission that we can play in Cyberpunk 2077 game. I wonder if it's a full open world moon-like city. We did do a video on uh, the moon rumors and things like that, and we showed uh, some proof uh, or evidence that that could be possibly true, that there could be a moon uh, city, because it is part of the lore as well. Um, space is definitely in the lore of Cyberpunk. So it uh, it's looking like the rumor could possibly be true, but I'm not sure how, to what extent. Um, we do have the orbital space, uh, a, a space station or, or the orbital space airport or whatever it's called. I can't, I can't, I can't think of it right now at the top of my head, but that is on the map that we've seen in one of the trailers. Um, so good comment there, Michael. We got Stephen Clark, Stephen Clark, Stephen, I'm, I'm horrible with names. I just can't wait. I've been telling everybody I'm not getting a console Xbox until Cyberpunk 27 comes out. This is like the only game that has me so stoked. Just the amount of details is insane. I agree. I totally agree. Thank you. Anita again saying, I think a good topic could be the world of Cyberpunk 27. Apparently, not every time the game is going to be inside Night City. There are outskirts and even moon travel. And I think another topic could be about augmentations, how augmentations can define our playstyle and even our look in the game. It's confirmed that the game will have a photo mode. Yes. Yep, we talked about the photo mode a little bit on about in this video, and uh, we did see some outskirts. There was a previous video that said that there's going to be an outskirting an outskirt area around Night City, uh, so there is that to look forward to. And in one of the trailers, we can see what looks like hills and grass and not a whole lot of buildings. And they did say that there was going to be a place where. Uh, they did say there was going to be a place where there's not a whole lot of buildings and not big crowds. And there was like these uh, redneck guys out there with like broken technology or ran down technology with guns and stuff like that. So I hope that we that we're going to see like the outskirts and country, a little bit of country like area, but not too much. Um, and the moon, the moon warmer is uh, definitely uh, on my want list big time. So thank you, Anita. We got uh, Shaquille. Shaquille Walker, I want to know your thoughts on what types of activities you believe will be playable in the mega buildings and around the cities. Also, a comparison with games like GTA 4 or 5, Activities, and Witcher 3. Another question, do you believe we'll see mini augmentations similar to Deuce X series? I Yes, I do. And uh, the, the types of activities that I think, they're just going to be activities. I think, uh, like, I think we've seen one. As we were walking, uh, as we saw the demo where they're walking uh, to the soda machine to the right, there was a character, there was an NPC boxing a uh, what looked like a robot. So I believe that there's going to be like uh, little things like that, you know, like uh, n not the end all be all, but I think that there's going to be little things like that that we get involved in. Maybe bars that we could go into, uh, maybe maybe even card games that you could possibly play. Uh, or, you know, just going into those buildings, getting missions, or maybe if you open up the a door, uh, maybe get your head blown off. I don't know. Uh, but there's, I think there's going to be quite a few things that we can do uh, on those other floors and, and just little side missions, little things that keep us busy, keep us having fun. Uh, Matt Barrett, will, car, will cars drive, hover, or fly? We've seen some, um, some hover uh, vehicles 
Um, and he did say you could drive uh, anything that you see, any, any type of those vehicles that you see around, and you could get into them and drive. Funny M says, uh, really excited for this game. I don't know anything about it other than it looks great. Any news info you have, I'm listening. Thank you so much, Funny M's. Enrico Bandito says, storyline and fighting mechanics, dialogue structure, and maybe compare things with The Witcher 3. Good, uh, Enrico Bandito. Good comment. Uh, John C says, possible topic multiplayer longevity similar to GTA Online. That is a good topic because they were given money from the Polish government. Uh, they were given $7 million to, to do, uh, I think, three or four categories. And one of them was multiplayer. The other one was uh, city building. I think another one was uh, animation. I can't remember if there was another one and what it was. But uh, one of them was definitely multiplayer. So they are developing it. It is in development. Uh, they don't plan on having Cyberpunk uh, being a multiplayer game when it's launched. Uh, so that's not in the final product. It's not what they want, but it's definitely looks like it multiplayer in some way, shape or form, whether it be co-op or open world. I don't know, uh, but it does seem like it is something that will come to us one day. Uh, I know that the Polish government wanted to see results of what they did with that seven million dollars by I think it's June or July of this year. Uh, so whatever they're doing with multiplayer and all those other categories as well has got to be done this year um, and show uh, proof of what they did uh, with that money. So ah, multiplayer. Yeah, I don't know how, you know, I, I'd like to get everybody's uh, ideas what, what you guys think multiplayer would be. Uh, do you, does it sound like something you would like or is it a, a big no? I don't know. Um, Bagheera says uh, yes, but does it have train manipulator? Oh, <laughs> no man's sky joke. Uh, thank you so much, Big Era. Uh, so I, I think there's some things that are destructible in in Cyberpunk. I I read two different conflicting things, and one thing said that the, there was going to be some destructible uh, in, in parts of the environment. Another one that I read said only glass and things like that will break in Cyberpunk. Um, but uh, it, you know, I don't know. So we'll have to. I'm sure you could put bullet holes in the buildings and things like that. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what it entails. Some more information is going to come out. I think we're starting going to start getting a, a big leak of information uh, as we get closer to the release. I'm still holding on to the, the, the feeling that I think Cyberpunk will be released this year, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, that is all I got for you today, guys. We're going to go ahead and jump off of here. As always, I love you. Thank you so much for coming back. And uh, cyborgs out there, be good and safe. Uh, see you all in the next video. Until next time.